Looking live at Tartan Arena in Oakdale, Minnesota on the campus of Tartan High School as the Tartan Titans get set to meet number six in class, or class single A, the Metamedi Zephyrs. I am Jeff Disher alongside former St. Paul Vulcan and one game played Minnesota Golden Gopher, Will Anderson. Will, welcome to the broadcast. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks for having me. Excited to be here. Looking forward to a good game. And on your screen, you see the Matamidi Zephyrs gathering in front of their goaltender, Ben Dardis, or it is Ben Dardis, who enters with a 2.35 goals against average and a 921 save percentage uh, for the Matamidi Zephyrs, who enter the contest at 10 and 3 on the season, including a three game win streak, or win streak, excuse me. Uh, last played against St. Thomas Academy back on. January 4th, there's Dardis with a 2.93 goals against. Uh, has played in all 13 games so far with a 9.13 on the save percentage. Flipping over to the Tartan side of the ice, you see Jack Cashin on your screen. He enters with an 8.81 on the save percentage and a three and a half goals against. One offensive assist and a seven to two win over Crookston earlier in the year. There is Matamidi head coach Jeff Poschel and we are actually underway at center. So like Wild Cherry once did, let's play that funky music, white boy. Back underway in the first play made by Matamidi's Nathan Grolke as it comes back into the uh, Matamidi offensive zone. This is Adam Johnson trying to drop it off. Johnson could not as it comes behind the net. Tartan in control, entering the game with a six and five record as they spar for it in the corner. Puck exits to the near corner and that is Max Cashin trying to clear it out. Big hit, freeing the puck up in the corner. And here go the Titans. Up ice. This is Jacob Swinghammer who dumps it in for fresh bodies right off the hop. 45 second line or er, shift leading to a line change. Tartan enters the zone. This is Easton Strecker, the brother to Bo, who we will reference throughout, throughout the game. Puck at the half wall. Brought in by Charlie Ashton and Ashton ran in two in the corner. Tartan still with possession. This is Bo Strecker. Strecker backhands one out front, puck still loose. And they whack it back to the point. Quick shot goes wide of the mark. Rebound controlled by Braden Fairbanks as he keeps it in at the point. Around the bend it'll go. Ashton could not handle it, but Fairbanks says I can keep it in the zone for now. Brayton Fairbanks sends it in for fresh bodies for Tartan. Matamidi will do the same. Comes up ice to, set to neutral, just out of the reach of Ryan Berglund, who was a member of the Magicians Open 18 under and unders in the, Nash or the uh, North American Premier Hockey League. Up ice for the Tartan Titans. Went Luke Young, I believe. Now it'll go into the corner where they wait for it and it comes back to Nate O'Sell. O'Sell with a shot that stung goalkeeper Ben, ben Dardis, who has three shutouts in, an, in a nine day span earlier in the year. We'll get to that. As a player goes down entering the zone, that was 21 in white, Marshall on. Thought we might've had our first penalty right there, but he, they didn't call it. I believe he fell on his own. I thought it looked like a stick got caught in his skates. Could be, 14.43 left to go in the opening canto. You see there Ben Dardis on your screen as we get ready for the next face off. I believe the net came off too. Both goalies seem to be seeing the puck well. Uh, Cashin for the Titans is really big kid, squaring up to the puck very well. 
taking away a lot of angle. 6-1, 165 is Cashin as that faceoff is won by Matamidi. Quick whistle. Halt to play four seconds later. And we'll have a, we'll have a face off in the same spot. And back underway we go. Tartan wins that draw. It'll go to Marshall on in the far corner. Now they spar for it, corner to corner. It'll come to Ray Olson. And Olson projects it up ice for an icing call. Immediate icing in uh, the Minnesota State High School League once it crosses the red line. No need to worry about hybrid icing and the like and injuries. Matamidi definitely thinks they're going to be able to stretch the ice here. They're trying to get that quick pass out of the zone and try to catch Tartan sleeping, but so far Tartan's been uh, retreating quite well and they're up to the task. And you saw Matamidi head coach Jeff Poschel in your shot just a second ago. Face off one by Matamidi as Lalik went around for it. Puck at the half wall now with Lalik into a scrum. And Matamida, or uh, Tartan, excuse me, won that scrum and it went to Easton Strecker. Now Matamidi up ice. We are scoreless in the early going. Three minutes or just about there have been played. Kept in at the, or in the Matamidi defensive zone. This is Grant Dardis, the brother to Ben. And Grant has four assists on the year. His only four points. And this will go down for icing. Early impressions once again, Will. So far, it looks like a pretty good game. I don't think both teams have settled in the way they want to settle in. Matamidi's passing is not quite clicking. Uh, Nor I think is they're Tartan. definitely trying to stretch the ice, and we'll see how that goes. Nor is Tartan's, in my opinion. 13.46 to go, period numero uno from here at Tartan Arena. And the faceoff won by the Titans. This goes back to Jacob Schwinghammer, and I thought he clanked iron. Back to Swinghammer, it'll go at the point. Swinghammer back down low, got blocked by a body in front of the cage. Piper is there for Matamidi to enter a scrum. Piper battling, he loses the battle to Brock Bertelson. And Tartan, or Matamidi, excuse me, desperately trying to clear the zone. We're gonna get our first power play here. Penalty coming at four, uh, three minutes, 45 seconds. For a, or for an interference call. So interference the call at, at uh, 345. Who is the guilty tartan, we ask you? It is Dylan Kisner. So Kisner to the box for interference at 345, giving Matamida the first power play of the game. They enter tonight's contest with a 30.4% power play. That is 14 of 46 for those who don't like percentages. You never want to get a penalty, but you certainly don't oh. want to get a penalty in the offensive zone. So that was unfortunate for him. Kisner will think about his sins in hockey jail for two minutes. Waiting for the puck to drop and the power play underway. Matamidi winning the draw. This is J.D. Metz who kept it in. Metz cycled it over to Ethan Peterson. Peterson back to Metz. Metz drops it left circle. Quick shot up high. And that went to Peterson who kept it in. Now this will go over to Ryan Berglund and Berglund has to exit the zone and Matamidi will re-enter and regather before they re-enter. Metz back behind the safety of his own cage if there ever was such a thing. Metz goes to Adam Johnson who had four assists against Sibley earlier in the year. Out to center come the the Titans, but only as far as center. This is Ethan Peterson in offside. And Ethan Peterson, Will, had two goals last season, and he has one or more assists in every game but three. Wow, that's fantastic. There was a nice play there by uh, Brandon Olson. He forced the Matamidi player offsides. It's not a play you see uh, very commonly in high school hockey, but it was a very heads up play by him. Neutral zone faceoff won by Matamidi with a buck and a dime left on the power play as they enter. This will go to Dylan Duxon who has eight games played for the Minnesota Magicians Open 18 and under team. That's in the, pros or the uh, Prospects Hockey League as it is touched out by Cole, Kingbe Cole Klingbeal. Eight points last year for Klingbeal. 
going into the Titan defensive zone. This is Jonah or uh, Charlie Ashton, excuse me. Nope, I was right the first time. That's Jonah Roberts on the ice. And a shot blocked off humanity in front of the cage. Not out of the zone though until just there. And Tartan will regather with fresh bodies on the ice. 20 left on the power play for Matamide. And it's looking like this first power play will go up, go up in smoke because of a scrum in the near corner. Awkward play behind the puck as Matamide will clear and the power play will go up in smoke in two, one, and that'll do it. That's a great kill by Tartan. I think Matamide only got one shot out of that thing and um, Cashin saw it very cleanly. Matamide enters the zone. Quick shot by Adam Johnson near post. And Jack Cashin says, you've got to be better than, the, than that, young man. He squares up very nicely. He's not giving the shooters much to look at. No. Not even from, far, from the far side either. And, a, and as a former goaltender, he played the angle real well. Schwinghammer with the puck for Tartan as it comes back out to center. And it will be touched on by Lalek who has to try again. Puck fenced for at the near wall by Chet Bertelson. And Matamidi will clear, but to center. It'll come to Johnson. Johnson right side, centers one. And it would not go for the Zephyrs. Rebound, again, would not go, and Tartan will clear it out. Ten and a half left in the opening frame. Fresh bodies on the ice for both teams. This is Shet Bertelson who comes off on a change. Now it'll go over to Schwantez. Schwantez's shot was blocked but regathered by Osell. Now it'll come back to neutral as that one is swept on by Berglund. Berglund tried to get it to Dylan Duxon, but Duxon wasn't quite quick enough. Brought ahead by the Titans. This will go to, I believe that was Luke Young. Now cross ice. And it'll be picked up by Ryan Berglund into a scrum and now out to center it'll go. Chip pass was intercepted. And the Titans will settle this one down with Brandon Olsen. These Olsen. two right here are gonna be uh, the ones to watch. I think Schwannis and on for Tartan. Both look pretty good. Both had great shots and warm ups. They seem to be moving the puck and they handle the puck very well. We'll see if they can connect here later on in the game. And you see the tail of the tape for Tartan and Matamidi. Tartan entering with 3.8 goals per game and they allow 3.4. Matamidi scores more than they give up by a 4.3 to 2.4 margin. And you see the power play and penalty kill stats that we've already referenced thus far. Nine and a half almost left to play in the opening frame. Braden Fairbanks with it back behind. It'll come into a scrum near side. And over is Easton Strecker to break that up. Loose puck back the blue line. Quick shot from there would not go for Max Piper. Tartan very dangerously trying to clear that puck away. Easton Strecker got run into after he did the honors and it will not be icing because it was touched on the way in. Madam and I will control this as we have free flowing play and both teams sort of playing Pong, and I thought you would appreciate the Atari reference. Brought over by Tartan's Braden Fairbanks, and it'll be given on to Ray Olson. Olson dropped it off, and both teams not making passes to save themselves. Olson into the offensive zone. And now into the corner we go. Brock, er, Breck puts here with it and now back behind the cage it'll come to Fairbanks. Fairbanks around the corner on the far side and now the puck chipped ahead to Brock Bertelson who enters the game with seven total points and 54 in his career. Big hit there behind the play and this puck centered to no Zephyr in particular as the Titans come out. 2v2 at the line and Ben Dardis will do what I would as he thought better of it. This line for Tartan, 9, 10, and 11. 
They seem to be a little bit more of a grinding type of a line, and Bertelson's done a nice job already getting in front of the... Uh, Which one? Uh, I was looking at 10, Brock. Brock. He's done a nice job of creating some uh, frustration in front of the goalie. Speaking of frustration for, Tar or for Tar Tartan, Matamidi won that draw as we tick down past the eight minute remaining mark in the opening frame. Quick pace of play the first nine minutes as this one comes up ice to Adam Johnson. Johnson skates in and drops it off to Dulac. Watch that kid. Nikolai Dulac, 98 total points in his career, 25 this year. 16 goals for Dulac. Seven and a half remaining in the opening frame as the puck is in a scrum back behind the cage. It'll go over to Max Cashin, who is the brother to Jack. And up the ice we go. That one kicked on and out of play by Shet Bertelson. Got to be very careful with the Bertelson boys, but uh, the Titans also have the Strecker boys to worry about in terms of names. I like the way both teams are playing in the defensive zone so far. Both teams uh, have had some offensive pressure, but the other teams are responding by uh, locking up guys and covering people and giving their goalies an opportunity to see the puck. Yeah, both teams are moving their feet, which was a key coming into the game from both sides. They're both well coached, you can see that. Yes. Matamita is sixth in Class A in the state. Speaking of the Zephyrs, they win the draw and work it into the offensive zone. This one picked up by Tony Newbeck, and Newbeck shot, struggled to get to the net, I thought as it comes into the near corner. Tartan now will try and find a way out. They do, and it'll come to Young. Young chips that one in, and Matamidi not giving Tartan time to work. We have a penalty coming at 10 minutes 29. Another ir interference call. 10.29, the time of the call, and it looks as though A Matamidi player whose number I did not get. Number five, Tony Newbeck. Newbeck, the guilty Zephyr. Second interference call of the night. And it will lead to a Tartan power play who enters with a 22.7% clip. That's 10 of 44 for those who don't like percentages. This goes to Fairbanks who drops it down low. Quick shot by Cashin was saved by Dardis. Rebound on the backside for Tartan to control. This is on, who worked it back to the point where Fairbanks waited. Down low, it'll come to Brock Bertelson. His shot from the near side wouldn't go, and Matamid, I will say, you've got to try again. Two very nice passes by the defenseman, Fairbanks, there. Both of them on the power play were put on the guy's forehand, which is really critical for quick buck movement. Speaking of quick puck movement, here come the Titans. Good. Brought on by On. Near side wouldn't go. He got it blocked. Now centering feed would or went to Fairbanks. And Fairbanks' pass intended for Schwantes, who picks it up. Schwantes. Fairbanks. Back to Schwantes. Down low. Backhand try. Not going to go. And the rebound squirts over to the corner. 59 left on the power play for Tartan to work with. But uh-oh, there's a two-on-one breakaway coming from Matamidi on the, on the uh, penalty kill. And now the Zephyrs go off for a change in the final 45, allowing tight, er, Tartan to come up ice. That's Schwantes who had it stolen from him. It goes to Dulac, whose shot missed everything. Piece of lumber on the ice. Here's Dulac with a shot and a stick save made by Jack Cashin. Now it'll go over to Easton Strecker in the corner. Strecker trying to calm things down with 20 seconds to go. As that little bit of a Matamidi rush scared Jack Cashin for sure. Around the bend it'll come. 440 left in the period, 10 on the power play. It'll come back to neutral and I believe both teams will go over on their first power play of the night. Puck into the corner, now Tartan in control. Five-a-side hockey we play. Don't know what the Titans were thinking there. Maybe to withdraw as it comes to Putzier. And Putzier has to be careful, even with players changing behind for both teams. Putzier shuffles by one and dumps it in. 
for a fresh body to complete the change for Cole Leach, who is 37, 25, and two in his time at Tartan High School. Brought on by the Titans, right side into the glove of Ben Dardis. And again, another nice defensive play by Matamida, number two, Justin Lalek there. The shot got through to the goalie and then he made sure he stayed with his man, so if his goalie doesn't handle it well, there's gonna be no rebound. Both of these goalies strong in the opening 13-08. Tartan's actually controlling play a little bit right now other than those breakdowns on the, on the power play. They're getting a little zone pressure. Full strength though, five-a-side hockey to be played as Tartan with his shot on the backhand, I believe, came from on. And the save is made, stopping play with 343. Face off in the same spot. And the puck is down, face off one by the Titans. Quick shot from the point. I believe that came from Nick Pierce. As it will go. Actually, that may have been Schwinghammer. Matamidi entered the zone, and now Tartan on the break. This will come to on. His shot! Believe missed everything. Really nice pass by Schwanis there. Again, right on the forehand, letting him take it and stride. Metz with this one back behind, and JD has 22 points in his career. Three and a dime now left to go in the opening frame. 2v2 at the line for Matamidi. This is Olsen who is running two. And now Matamida is offside at the line. Mets entered late. That was close. I'd like to see that one on replay. I don't know if we have it. <laughs> Hypothetically speaking, I'd in, like to see that one on replay. Theory, yes, it was a bang bang play. The referee was right there though. The linesman was right there and got thinks he got the call correct. Face off coming in the neutral zone. One by by Tartan and the pass intended for Fairbanks, and he almost paid for it. That was Duxon with a shot that just missed. Under three minutes to go in the period as we sit at zero late in the opening frame. Quick shot by Jonah Roberts, missed everything, and it comes back out to center. Dumped in by the Titans, and a quick shot, pad save made. It'll come instead to Nathan Grokey. Grokey on the year one assist as he dumps it the length of the ice for Pootzier to pick up. Pootzier shimmies around one and here comes Pootzier near side. He'll dump in and the puck blocked on the way through. Pootzier I believe went down after the play and we're back on side as Berglund picks it up. Berglund on the far side of the ice trying to skate in for a shot opportunity that Tartan will not give into the corner, two minutes to play, as it will go into a scrum. Scrum in the corner, one by Tartan, as they will clear the length of the ice. Four and immediate icing call. High school hockey, the teams are allowed to change after icing beyond high school, juniors and pro. You cannot. You cannot. And that's, for clarification purposes, that is the offending team. Correct. That's a rule I'd like to see changed. Agreed, because you're going into college and some of the college rules are not like uh, high school in the least. As this comes to Chet Bertelson and Bertelson upended near the blue line. Back to chase after it is his brother Brock who picks up the trash in the corner. Brought ahead by Tartan as we have 85 seconds remaining in the period, Shet Bertelson was offside. Let me ask you this, will, though, will silly little mistakes like that end up costing whichever team potential possession and potential shot or potential chances to score? Hockey's a game of capitalizing on the opponent's mistake. So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Face off one by Tartan and sent in. These teams, I feel, both teams, I feel like are counter pun or, or punching, but not being counter punched right now. But it's not like certain heavyweight fights that just involve dancing for 10 rounds. Final minute of play here in the opening frame from Oakdale. 
Fun one so far for a scoreless game as a quick shot there delivered by Dulac was stopped and the rebound also stopped with the assistance of the side of the net. Into the corner we go, 40 to play in the period. Again, Matamida had good zone time there, but the defensive posture out of Tartan was really good. They picked up the guys. I sing. I'm not sure. Judging by the uh, official, it looks like icing was called with 36 seconds left. Hold on here. I'm thinking they're going to take this one to neutralize. I don't think they thought it was icing. We'll see what uh, so, uh, they are going to go through with it. Okay. Yeah, I didn't see a signal there, but I was just looking at the posture of the uh, official. Well, Leach isn't happy about it either. Good to see that the three of us are thinking alike, in a sense. Here we go again, 36th and 110th remaining in the period. Face off won by Matamidi. But Newbeck could not get a shot away. As Osell sprinting into the offensive zone, no check that, that was on sprinting in. Tartan now coming ahead, and they're offside at the line with 20 left to go. That would have been a good opportunity, three on one there. E boy, there's Marshall on on your screen. 14 points on the season in 11 games. It's awfully good, so I've been told, and so math tells me. It's a pretty good number. If you can keep putting them up like that, you'll go a long ways. Matamidi wins the opening, or wins the draw. 15 seconds left to go. Dulac sent it around the corner. And we enter the final 10 as these teams just looking to get into the room. We end like we began with a scrum and a quick shot at the horn. Oh, Hang goal. on. They're going to call it a goal. And this will be Tony Newbeck's second goal of the year. Right at the horn. Traffic in front of the net and a tip. We'll wait for the we'll wait for the official announcement. I believe Newbeck had the original shot. The officials are talking about it. Hold on. And if we can roll back that look that we just had as the teams leave the ice. We're gonna have to wait for an official announcement here. Well, he called it a goal. I'm pretty sure he's going to stand by here's, his. Here's a look. This is Newbeck's original shot. That is tight. I think it went off Nathan Osel or Osel in front of the net there, and it got deflected a little bit. They give the goal. I believe Tulak will get the assist. We'll double check it during the intermission, but at the end of one period, we have a, we're gonna have another look. Dulac with the shot. That was not tipped on the way in. That is a legit Nikolai Dulac goal, or sorry, Tony Newback goal for his second of the year. Second of the year, third in his career. And that, friends, neighbors, is how period one comes to an end. Will Anderson, your thoughts as a Saint Paul, a former St. Paul Vulcan? Pretty good period for both clubs. Uh, I'm impressed with both goalies, again, squaring up to the puck, taking away the angles, not giving the shooters a lot of net to shoot at. The game has changed quite a bit in that regard from when I played. Goalies, you know, tried to stack the pads and make a kick save, and here it's a little bit more like geometry. They're taking away the angles and then making an athletic save when they have to make an athletic save. Except for one angle taken it's, away. And, and, and I thought it looked like it got tipped, but you saw the replay and said it did not. So a um, lot of traffic in front, though. Take their eyes away and make it hard for the goalie to see the puck. That's Cle about the only way you can score in the game nowadays. Cleanliness, the name of the game for Matamida, literally at the end of the period. Let's take a quick timeout. And we'll be back with you for a recap of the opening period. This is SCC Sports.
diagnosed with glaucoma. There were no symptoms. I had no headaches. Three million Americans have glaucoma, and half don't even know it. 11 million people in the United States have macular degeneration. You lose mobility, independence, changes your entire life. So many eye disorders can be treated if caught early. My husband tells me that I have beautiful brown eyes, and I don't want to lose that. Make a plan today to get your eyes checked. Visit brightfocus.org to learn more. Since the moment you were born, I've made a thousand wishes. Wishes for your future in a world that's changing fast. For all of the things you may one day do, do play and laugh. Do win and lose. Do learn from your mistakes and challenge yourself to grow. Do not be afraid or make decisions based in fear. Do it all with confidence and with kindness and strength. Do call your mom and ask her for advice. And always do your best to remember that no matter what you do in this life, what matters to me is that you keep doing. I love you always, Mom. Some kids never smile. They're embarrassed by their crooked teeth. They want braces like the other kids, but their families can't afford them. Some may even try to straighten their teeth themselves. That can make everything worse. Luckily, there's Donated Orthodontic Services, a program from the American Association of Orthodontists. It helps provide orthodontic treatment to kids and teens whose families can't afford it. For kids who apply, are approved, and are matched with a volunteer orthodontist, it can be life-changing. Their treatment is in the hands of an expert, a licensed local orthodontic specialist who improves their smiles by correctly aligning teeth and jaws. Some kids think they'll never smile again, but donated orthodontic services may help them smile with confidence. To link to the application and eligibility requirements, visit aaoinfo.org. Do you worry about how much someone drinks? Do you feel angry or depressed most of the time? Do you feel neglected or unloved? Do you feel you attract people who tend to be compulsive or abusive? Do you have money problems because of someone else's drinking? Are you afraid or embarrassed to bring your friends home? Do you feel that if the drinker loved you, she or he would stop drinking. If you answered yes to any of these questions, you are not alone. More than half of all adults have a family history of alcoholism. Not everyone trapped by alcohol is an alcoholic. Families and friends are suffering too. Al-Anon and Alateen can help. Call 1-866-200-0223 or visit al slash help. Back at Tartan Arena, which is the site or the arena that ISD 622, the city of Maplewood and the city of Oakdale built. Jeff Disher here alongside former St. Paul Vulcan, Will Anderson. And let's recap the period for you if we can. There's only really one thing to really talk about and that happened literally at the horn. Uh, it was Matamira's only goal and the only goal of the game. Howdy, uh, look left. And uh, that went to Tony Newbeck, who scored his second goal of the season for eight total points on the year, 16 total points in his career. And we're going to go to the goal right now as the puck comes back to the point. Newbeck. Kicks it with his skate to his forehand. Got it flat. And near pole. That's in. That is in before the buzzer. Just under the uh, crossbar with one-tenth of a second left. 
but that puck was flat. If we were in the NHL, we'd send that up to Toronto and they'd make an official decision, but look left. We've got to go with the <laughs> monitor and it looks good. It was great camel work by the guys over at the SCC TV. We got a good look at the clock, good look at the goal, and a good look at the puck, and it does appear to be a good goal. Impressions on what needs to happen for Tartan now to answer. Well, Tartan's going to have to continue to get traffic in front of the net. They, uh, the Bertelson line's done a nice job of trying to create some traffic in front of the goalie, try to get some tips, some second chance opportunities. That's what I think is going to beat these goalies nowadays. Again, it's very, very tough to beat a good quality goalie with uh, just a clean shot because they do square up so well and they're very athletic and typically nowadays they're a lot bigger. So to beat them, it's going to typically take a tip or a second chance opportunity off a pad. And Menemidai entered the contest tonight with a four, or sorry, a three game winning streak uh, that extended back into the end of last calendar year. Uh, how does Matamidai keep it rolling? Well, I think Matamidai's probably got them on skill. Overall, I think Matamidai's probably a little bit sharper of a team in terms of skill. Matamidai's top five guys basically double the production, scoring production of Tartan's top five guys. So I think you gotta dig a little deeper into the lineup if you're Tartan and if you're Matamidai, you wanna just keep up the pace of the game, keep trying to make it a fast, skilled game and try to try to use your skill and speed over, over um, Tartan. Let's take a time out. We will have the second intermit or the second period upcoming next. I had to pack up all my things. I had to leave my home. And I never knew where I was going next. It felt like I never even had a say. But then you came along. Change a child's story. There's a child in foster care waiting for a volunteer like you. Learn how you can help at casaforchildren.org. I'm a veteran. We hit a mine in Vietnam. When I came home, I didn't know where to turn. As America's veterans face challenges, DAV is there. My victory's been never giving up hope. My wife is always there to remind me we have a life to live. DAV provides a lifetime of support, helping veterans of every generation get the benefits they've earned. I am a veteran, but after I got out, I spent two years alone and homeless. Every year, DAV helps more than a million veterans so they can reach victories great and small. My victory was finding the support to get back on my feet. Now I'm getting things right with my family. I finally admitted with my PTSD, I wasn't doing well. But there's more to be done and more victories to be won. Now I wish I'd found DAV sooner. I am a veteran. My victory is just enjoying each day. Help support more victories for veterans. Go to DAV.org. Un ataque cerebral puede ser fácil de detectar. Su ser querido no logra hablar o quizás no puede moverse. Pero existe otro síntoma de ataque cerebral que muchos de nosotros no vemos. Se llama negligencia espacial y puede ocurrir durante o después de un ataque cerebral, causando movimientos visuales distorsionados. Afortunadamente, existe una solución que utiliza tecnología óptica basada en prismas durante la rehabilitación. Si usted o su ser querido experimenta un ataque cerebral, pregúntele a su doctor sobre la negligencia espacial. Encuentre más información en KesslerFoundation.org. Messerships is bringing services to countries that would otherwise never be able to access those services. just see people that need help, you realize that they have no way of getting help. And I want them to know that they're loved. Thanks for buying a fishing license. I want you to picture all the great things this simple purchase does. Like building public boat ramps 
keeping local waters clean, and maintaining a healthy fish population. What's mom doing? When you buy a fishing license, you do a lot. Every dollar protects and maintains your local waterways for future generations to enjoy. Visit TakeMeFishing.org. My Shiro doesn't always wear a cape, but she always has time for a hug, a smile, for going the extra mile. My Shiro stretches every dollar, puts in long hours, puts others first. But now it's your time, Mom. When you're ready to retire, we want you to be able to enjoy it. It's time to start saving now. A free three-minute online chat can give you the personalized tips you need to start boosting your retirement savings today. Visit aceyourretirement.org slash Shiro. We are back from Tartan Arena here in Oakdale. Jeff Disher, Will Anderson, heartbeat up high after that buzzer beating goal of Matamidis to open the game as the teams are back onto the ice for the second period of play. Welcome to TV, Will. Thank you very much. <laughs> you know, if you're Matamida, you're coming out and you're riding the high there. That's obviously a great way to end the period, getting a goal there, taking that energy and enthusiasm into the locker room. And if you're Tartan, you just got to let it go. Tartan has got to figure out how to move on past that. Uh, calm their emotions a little bit and come back out and play their game. And in the in the first 1659 plus, both teams are okay. 1655, we'll call it actually. Um, both teams were just trading blows like that of a of a heavyweight fight, and you really couldn't get anything anything through we don't have any official shot tally but you felt like we were waiting and as Tom Petty once said the waiting is the hardest part and we had to wait until the clock hit zero yeah I said I alluded to it earlier and I was poking around today at my office looking at the, the coaches and and everybody and and I noticed that um, Matamidai's head coach, Posho, he was a goalie. Yes. And Tartan has two former goalies, Tellerico and Leach are both former goalies. And I think it shows in both teams' play. They uh, play good defensive zone and good quality teams start from the goalie and build out. Underway with period two, the team switch ends and Matamidai comes in right off the hop. Quick pass in front. Went through everybody as it comes back into the neutral zone for the Zephyrs to regather. Matamidai entering the game as the sixth best team in Class A as this one is picked up back behind by Max Cashin. Over near corner, into a scrum it went. Matamidi controls it with Peterson as he sent it around the corner. Now, far side, quick shot from Grolke. Missed everything. As we're in the first minute of the second period. Picked up by Max Piper into the offensive zone as Dulac dances around two. His shot was blocked by Humanity in front. Now it'll come the way of the Titans as it comes off the stick of Brock Bertelson and Bertelson tried to regather, but Grokey was too quick. Grokey got it out to Ethan Peterson, but icing will be waved at the line by the men in stripes. It'll come back to center and it'll bounce out to Brock Bertelson who sends it the length of the ice for Newbeck to pick up. Quick shot on goal by Pootsier. Believe that left the rink. I think he got deflected into the upper netting. And again, great defensive showing right there by uh, Matamidi. Number five, Newback, as soon as the goalie made the save, he's right there to, to uh, push away the offensive guy. You see the Class A rankings on your screen. Matamidi sixth best according to letsplayhockey.com. As a quick shot, almost fooled Ben Dardis. And now Tartan tilting the ice in their direction as this goes to Pootzier. Pootzier kept it in at the line, but not for long. Brought ahead though by Matamidi and Ray Olson. Got around two on his backhand is Berglund. And it went around the corner for Tartan to regather. Bo Strecker did just that. And it'll come instead to JD Metz who threw it in. Metz at the point, hit shot blocked by a skate of Bo Strecker. Matamidi keeping it alive. Back down low, it'll go to Berglund. Into the corner, 
Tartan now looking for one as Grant Dardis finds it. Dardis with a centering feed into humanity and Tartan cannot turn it around. Now the puck gloved and played by Jonah Roberts. Dropped it off to Pootzier and Pootzier dropped it off in return. It'll go to Fairbanks back behind the cage and Fairbanks pressured. Schwantes was hit after he dumped it in and Schwantes kept it alive in the offensive zone. Schwantes dropped it to the near half wall and it will come back around the bend where Schwantes says, here, let me pick up the trash for you. Brought back behind and now Matamidi shoved back to the ropes as that one left the rink and is a souvenir for somebody to take home. Now in the NH, the rankings are back. Matamidi sixth best in class A, 10 and three record on the season. And that's according to letsplayhockey.com. Got a new um, leader on that board or somebody that entered the top 10 there, Gentry Academy out of White Bear Lake. They're kind of new this year. And a, uh, and the old guard on top in class A, that would be Hockey Town USA to some, Warroad, Minnesota. Back underway we go, Tartan with possession of the puck in the offensive zone. Three on two at the line. If they were lucky, quick shot wide of the cage and the rebound forces the net off. Now I say Hockey Town USA to some because those in Tiger Town would beg to differ. They have a point, but so does Warroad. Warroad definitely has a point. <laughs> Face off in the near corner, won by Matamidi as Bertelson struggled. Here come the Zephyrs. We've said this before. Brought ahead by Peterson, no he did not. Icing as it goes the length of the sheet. Matamida trying to stretch it again there, trying to see if they can catch Tartan off guard, but they're doing a good job of retreating. On your screen there for Matamida is Nikolai, du or Nikolai Dulak, who has been held off the scoreboard so far, as Newbeck has the only goal of the game for the Zephyrs, his third of his career, second of the season. Now Metamidi sends that one into the benches. My prediction, if Tartan gets on the board, it's gonna be this line right here. This Bertelson line really seems to be sustaining some pressure. They seem to be a little bit grittier and they're getting some action in front of the goal. Both Bertelsons? Both Bertelsons. <laughs> Puck is down, face off one by Matamidi as it comes back around the corner. Ethan Peterson with it as it's kept alive by Max Cashin. Cashin sent it around to Shet Bertelson and Bertelson takes a seat on the ice. Puck freed up on that play awkwardly back behind, but it will lead to an immediate icing call, so nothing doing. But again, Matamidi trying to stretch that ice. Speaking of stretching, Matamidi is seven and one this year when they lead after one period of play, which they almost did not do. It's a pretty good streak. By one tenth of a second, mind you. 13 minutes left in the bank here in the second period is a quick shot into the glove of Ben Dardis. Dardis, three up. I'm gonna do it. Three shutouts in a nine day span earlier in the year. Started December December 10th at Monticello, you had and to there do it goes. It. You had to do it. I just did it. You're welcome. Tartan on the board. I had to go there, didn't I? Tie game. It'll go to Braden Fairbanks, his third of the year. Very, very nice job picking up that rebound by, by Fairbanks. That's a, that's a great goal. Came right in on his forehand and just pounded it in. No shame, no apologies. Face off at center. <laughs> Again, it was a second opportunity though. It was. Goalie made the first save. Fairbanks' his fourth goal of his career. 12.40 left to go in the second period. Even strength goal for Fairbanks. 
on, I believe, uh, announced as one of the assists as it comes back out to center. Touched on by Marshall on. And now side of the net would not go. I'm sure I'll get some stick from Poshel for, uh, for that after the fact. Anyway, 12 and a dime remaining in the period as this one leaves the ice. Good response by Matamidi. Taking the face off right down into the tartan zone and getting some pressure of their own and got a second chance opportunity as well. And that uh, second chance led to the goal as you just indicated, which led to the tie game. I will reiterate, it's very, very tough to beat goalies nowadays. Yes. Puck is down, face off one by Matamidi. Back behind it'll go into a scrum as falling to his knees was Dulac. Now out to center, two are one on two, so it would have been an odd man rush. Big hit back behind the play. I did not see who went down, but we play on. Puck back behind the net into a rugby scrum in the near corner. This is Tony Newbeck, who scored the game's opening goal. Centering feed went over to Johnson, and Johnson's second effort was blocked by Humanity. Metz kept it alive at the line, but here come the Titans. Brought on by Brock Bertelson, whose shot went wide of the cage. Bertelson went down into a heap after the shot, and here comes Matamidi. Back and forth we go as it comes into the zone for Dulac. And it left the ballpark. Dulac had Strecker on his left side. I'm not sure he saw him. The game's pretty easy when you can see the whole ice sheet up from our vantage point, but a lot harder when you're on the ice. He had a guy open on the left, and he would have been on his forehand. Would have been a great pass, but just wasn't there. Face off near corner. Puck is down. Face off to, tar er, to Tartan. And now the puck dribbles out in front. Quick shot from Piper would not go. Here come the Titans. Brought ahead by Strecker, and that's Easton Strecker, who is run into. Here come Matamida. Brought ahead by Berglund into the corner. He shoved. Berglund got out of there with possession of the puck momentarily as it dribbles down the, the glass to Piper. Here comes Mata, er, here comes Tartan back as far as neutral. Brought ahead by Klingby, a left circle. His centering feed would go. What a defensive play by Brady Fairbanks there. Great job getting back and lifting the stick. That was for sure a goal if he doesn't have a good heads up play. Yes, agree. 10 and a quarter left to go. Piper with it for the Zephyrs. Both teams tested here in the early minutes of period two, of which we are counting the first seven down right now. Brought back to neutral for Tartan to control. This is Marshall Ahn who danced around one, but he lost the puck to do so. And now I believe the uh, X's and O's are being executed by both teams. No naughty pa or dirty passes or, or such from both teams. This will go to on around the corner it went to Os or to Osell. Kept alive by Tartan and it would not go. 920 left to go in the second. As it comes back out to center, both teams looking for a knockout punch or a, a knockdown punch. Sending it into the zone was Brandon Olsen. Now it'll come ahead for Matamidi. That stretch pass intended for Blake Hansen leads to an icing. Lalek had the look there though. He found the open man. He just missed him with the pass. He had the right play, just uh, didn't quite click. He was in if, if that pass was a little uh, cleaner. Speaking of clicking, Matamidi, we mentioned this at the top of the second period. Matamidi, 10 times they've, slid, they've uh, scored the first goal. They've won nine. Brought ahead by the Zephyrs, two on one at the line. Centering feed went to Peterson, but it got blocked in a whistle stopping play with the net off. Swing hammer, I believe, on the defensive play there. Very nice play by him on that two on one. 
He is a three-sport athlete for Tartan hockey, football, and lacrosse. That's not something you see too frequently anymore. That's pretty impressive. And by football, I oh, don't it mean. Was not Schwinghammer though. Who was it? Was that? Twenty-seven, maybe. It may have been Max. Cashin. Max Cashin. It was Max. I'm sorry, Mrs. Cashin. <laughs> Brought ahead in an offside position by Jake Swinghammer. I talk up that you play three sports, Jake, and you do us wrong, my friend. Hockey, football, lacrosse. 8.39 to go, second period of play. Puck is down, face off, under, or, uh, face off to Matamida, and we're back underway. It goes to Cashin, who sends it around the corner, and eventually Newback will pick it up. Tony Newback probably saying, I want you to want me, but I don't think he listens to Cheap Trick. Brought ahead by Tartan, and that sent in courtesy of Max Cashin. Eight and a dime left to go in the second period of play. I'll bet Tony wants the second goal. I'm sure he would love a second goal. <laughs> Brought ahead by Poutier, his shot into the bread basket of Ben Dardis. I mentioned earlier with Dardis that he had three shutouts in a nine day span that started against Mon Monticello. He also has one against South St. Paul and Northfield. And you ruined his shutout tonight. I did, guilty as charged. Puck is down, face off, or I, he had three shutouts in a nine day span. I want to make that clear. Puck down, back underway we go. Tartan with the face off win. And it will come back to Putzier, whose shot is wide. Shet Bertelson picked it up and centered one that went to no Titan in particular. Brought ahead though by the Zephyrs. Three on two at the line if they're lucky. And they got in on side. It will come to Duxon, who has played eight games in, in, in the NAPHL for the Minnesota Magicians Open team. Again, great defensive posture by the Tartan Titans right yes. there. Nobody was open. And they translate it into an offensive chance as it will come to Fairbanks back behind the cage. Now back over, here come the, the Zephyrs once again. Two on two at the line. Skating in is Klingbeal. And Klingbeal dropped into the side of the net. And we play on. 6.50 left to go in the second period of play. And now Tartan looking to settle things down. Up and down hockey we play here so far. As it comes over to Blake Hansen. Put zero pick up the trash as a line change going on for the Titans. Now the Zephyrs looking to settle things down. Brought ahead though by the Titans. Dropped off, side of the net, score! Luke Young. Again on the rebound. Fourth goal of the year for Young, fourth goal of his career. He went hard to the net here, you're gonna see him. 26. Luke Young lying in wait at the side of the net. He did a great job of making sure he was on his forehand so he didn't have to make a shift once the puck was there. He was able to pound it away very cleanly. Second goal of the night scored at that end of the three that we've had. On with his second assist of the of the game for his eighth assist of the season. And I intentionally paused waiting for it. Two on one for Tartan as a late trailer comes in in Dylan Kisner and the save is made by Dardis. So Tartan's assistant coach is a guy by the name of Chad Remichel who played for Colorado College and prior to that I played against him in the USHL. And again, kind of poking around today, he had 94 points his second year in the USHL, oh. which is quite a number. I point that out because I think some of these boys on Tartan really know how to shoot the puck. They're coming into the net, they're coming into the zone ready to shoot versus having to wait for the puck to get there and then change. 
I believe Luke Young proved that. As the puck is down, face off one by the Zephyrs as they skate out. Three on two, and we play on. I was waiting for something to happen. Brought back into the corner by Matamita as they, they uh, fence for it up the wall. Looking for the next goal as Matamita will come out of that scrum with the puck. It'll go instead to Tartan as it's brought ahead by Stre or Bo Strecker. Quick shot off a skate, and that came from Easton Strecker. Kept in by Jonah Roberts, as it is picked up by Tony Newbeck. Back behind, five left in the period. As it is skated ahead by J.D. Metz. Metz tried to get around one. He will throw it into his offensive corner. Metz around the bend. Now they walk the line. And out comes Tartan. Brought ahead by Bo Strecker with four and a half to play. Here comes Matamida off to the races is Dulac. Dulac dropped it off. Just missed him on that pass. And here comes Tartan in return. Quick shot, save me, Dardis. Into the corner. It'll come back to Matamida. And now they are off to the races again. Two on two at the line. Right circle, quick shot up in the air. It'll come back down in the slot and it's blocked on the way in. Schwantes will exit the zone with the puck and it'll go the length for an icing. I think it was at the, the dot. Couple good opportunities for Matamida. They've stretched the ice there on a couple different plays and just have failed to click on a couple passes. But the, uh, the plays are there and Tartan's had a couple defensive breakdowns. Tartan. Four and two, you had to do that, didn't you? Four and two when they give up the first. In six opportunities. And hey, we showed the last, I believe it was 10 when Matamida scores first. So we had to do it. Brought ahead by the Titans, but that'll lead into an icing call. And in the second intermission, we'll, we'll remind you that Will and I will have a recap of the second period and talk about impressions going into the third. We hope you're enjoying this one. We sure are. Puck is down, face off one by the Zephyrs. This one will go to JD Metz who kept it alive at the line. It'll come now to Blake Hansen who tries to turn the corner with it. He could not shimmy as it will go instead to Tartan as coming out of the zone is Roberts, but only as far as the red line. 3.20 left to go in the second period of play, and Brandon Olson trying to pick up the trash for the Titans. Back out to a vacant corner, the puck will go. Dangerous and pass. And Osell lost it in his skates. And that may lead to a mistake. No, it does not. The Titans will exit the zone. Brought in offside, Brandon Olsen. I have a feeling the coach may talk to a couple players there about not throwing the puck in front of your own net. That's kind of 101. You want to keep it to the sides and not in front of your own house. Yes. I feel like the goaltenders will be a part of that conversation. Just they, a feeling. They usually let you know. <laughs> 2.50 left to go in the second period of play. Been a fun one, folks, and we're glad you're with us. As this one will come back into the Tartan offensive zone. Chasing after it from Matamidi is Dulac, but it will go down for icing. So Dulac. we just saw again where Matamidi was trying to stretch the ice and get that quick outlet pass, but yes. every time you have that, you're a little bit exposed defensively, and it almost cost them there. Tartan uh, just missed keeping that puck in the net, and if they did, they would have had Matamidi outnumbered. We'll see if that comes into play here. Two and a half minutes to play, second period. And 
and the Zephyrs win the draw. Two on two at the line if they're lucky again. Onside come the Zephyrs. Johnson over on the far side, it went to Peterson there. Peterson tried to drop it off. And who got run into? That was Dulac. They've kept him off the scoreboard tonight, I wonder why. Brought ahead by Kisner, onside at the line is Kisner as he goes down drawing a hooking call at 14.54. I think we should nickname no, this. We should nickname this line the law firm. <laughs> Bertelson, Kistner, and Bertelson. Sounds like a law firm. You don't have an insurance connection, do you? I do, but not law. <laughs> <laughs> the guilty Zephyr, Nathan Grokey, our third interference call of the night. I'm willing to wager that Tartan's gonna try to get the puck back to the points and just hammer it with some of these guys, uh, creating some traffic in front of the net here. I would not disagree as this goes to Schwantes at the point. Schwantes quarterbacking the power play on this line for Tartan. Fairbanks dropped it off and it went to the side of the net. Bodies flying as Matamidi trying to desperately clear the zone with a buck 47 to play. Very nice play by Newback, hammering that out of the zone on his forehand. Want to mention that Tartan will be on the power play for the rest, or actually there's a six second difference between power play and game clock. As a quick shot there, saved by Dardis. Rebound comes back over to Schwantes, who threw it cross ice to Fairbanks. And I believe that shot left the rink. Marshallon had a great look there, but again, proof as to how tough it is to beat a goalie. Yes. Dardis was up to the task and just steered it away. None of the three goals, I think, have been short or have been uh, far side. I'll, I, I was going to say short side, but that's wrong. I don't think any of the three goals have entered the net on the far side of the of the net. Quick shot, loose in front, score! Tartan with a 3-1 lead. There it was, traffic in front, and a good shot from the point on a rebound. Hockey 101 at Tartan Arena. Luke Young, I believe, is second goal of the night. Ben Dardis says, what the heck do I have to do? Yeah, he's making the first saves. First save there made on the initial shot from Bo Strecker. And Luke Young says, let me pick up the trash young man and put it in the net. Final minute 14. Young with his second goal, power play over. So that's a power play goal. No, check that, that is a shorthanded goal for Tartan. And I might need help with that. You do, but that's okay. It was a power play goal, I am correct. 49 seconds left in the period. Thank you to the assist in my ear. Matamidi with the shot there that may have hit the, the upper netting, but we play on. Quick shot, looked for a deflection, did Ray Olson, but he could not find. Half a minute to play. And a quick shot for Matamidi would go by the wayside as a hit made in the slot. That was a beautiful look by Metz. J.D. Metz made a great play from the point. 20, now 17 seconds left in the period, I can tell you that now shots on goal have entered the fray. Tartan has 14. Not counting the blocks, obviously. Uh, that power play should be over. Don't know why it's still running. However, we play on. 10 left in the period. And Tartan content to run into the locker room with a two goal lead and that's what they'll do. The Tartan Titans say, hey, we can come to play two. And they lead by two after two. Impressions on the second period. You know, Matamidai's game is a little bit different than Tartan's game. Matamidai plays more of a skill game, and when you're on, the skill game is great. But when you're a little bit off, like they are on their passing today, the skill game gets a little bit tougher. Conversely,
Tartan is a little bit more of a gritty team, a more throw the puck at the net and grind hard in front of the net, try to get some screens and try to get some rebounds. That game is a little bit easier to play when it's off because I don't want to call it sloppy, but it's a little bit less of a skilled game. I don't know it's what their, else you could say. It's their game, it's their identity, and for them it's working well tonight. They're doing a nice job of getting pucks on, on Dardis and they're getting second chance opportunities and they're, they're hammering them away. Let's take a timeout. We will have a recap of the second period coming up, and we'll also have the third period as well. But high school hockey is yours tonight, thanks to SCC. Chiru has no choice. She and millions like her must walk miles every day for dirty water. But together, we can end their walk by providing clean water close by. Instead of spending hours walking to get water that makes them sick, girls can be in a classroom that expands their minds and moms will gain back time to care for their families. Sons and daughters can grow up strong, finally free of sicknesses caused by dirty water. At World Vision, care about clean water runs deep. Deep enough to reach one new person with clean water every 10 seconds. Because every child, every person, everywhere deserves clean water and the chance to rise to their full potential. It's true. When you just add water, you change a life. Learn more at worldvision.org. And he's tagged in like 400 of my posts. Well, I can cut out tags. No, that's that's not how it works. What is a tag? <laughs> you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care would love to share their first with you. Let me tell you about the toughest guy on earth. He does the work of two jobs, but only gets paid for one. He's tough enough to feed the man that gave him a lifetime of nourishment. <sighs> he has the crazy strength to lift the man that raised him up without even flinching. That's right, no employee of the month bonus check here. This guy, no, this warrior, will always be by his father's side even if his dad will hardly remember. Good luck finding a gym to train for that. If this guy isn't the toughest guy on the planet, then I don't know who is. Caregiving is tougher than tough. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. Hey, look, it's those guys. What's good? What's up? What's happening today? Let's hear those pearly whites, man. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
are back at Tartan Arena on the campus of Tartan High School in Oakdale, Minnesota. Jeff Disher, Will Anderson with you. And we are set to recap period numero dos for you. And this game really has been a tale of two periods, if I can use the Giroux phrase. Has no choice. Let's recap the second she one. Millions uh, Luke Young had two of the three goals in the period that we'll see on replay momentarily. And Braden Fairbanks, the third. Talk about the second period in your eyes. Well, I think it's a, a, a game of Tartan getting a lot of bodies in front of the net, putting pressure on Matamidai in front of the net, um, forcing uh, the goalie, his name's not coming to me right now, I apologize, um, for Darden, Dardis. forcing, for, forcing Dardis, uh to make the second and third saves on, on um, Tartan's third goal, they actually, he made two quality saves and the third one got in. So Matamidi defensemen have got to clear those guys out in front, tie up sticks and not give them the second and third chance opportunities. We will take a look at the first goal from Matamidi's Tony Newbeck at the end of the first period that we think went in under the wire. Now, this is the first goal from Tartan. And this one is one of Luke Young's goals. His body position was just tremendous right there. Yes. On the forehand, ready to hammer at home. And the putt came to him flat. So, so Tartan scored a goal before the one that you are seeing here. One at, save, two saves. And actually that is Luke Young's second goal of the period. And that is it. Fairbanks' goal, the only one we have not seen. And so that is how we arrive at three to one. And we will pause, I think, and bring you the third period We'd coming to share up first with next. you. job but only gets paid for one he's tough enough to feed the man that gave him a lifetime of nourishment <laughs> he has the crazy strength to lift the man Jason, let's go see your room. What do you think? We kept it a little spare, so you can decorate it how you like. Dinner! Hello? Excellent. Soccer is fun. Yeah, I saw you guys out there.
My son Andrew was always a joy to be around. He was smart and talented with a personality that just drew people to him. And he is all of those things and more today. I always taught him to be accepting of other people and to be true in everything you do. That's why when Andrew was suddenly fired from his teaching job for being gay, I literally felt my heart break. As a parent, you try to prepare your child for anything that can happen in life, but how do you prepare them for something like that? I hope for a future where no matter what a person's sexual orientation is, hey. people will be treated with respect, equality, and <laughs> love. I am what hunger looks like in America. I am an eight-year-old girl who's not excited for the last day of school. Because this may be the last time I'll have lunch. Till September. I am a single father of two who works three part-time jobs. And that's still not enough to put food on the table. I am a 16-year-old boy who just got my first job to help feed my little sisters. I was created by artificial intelligence from faces of the one in eight Americans who struggle with hunger. People you pass by every day but never knew they were hungry. Feeding America, 200 food banks strong. Back at Tartan Arena on the campus of Tartan High School here in Oakdale, Minnesota. Jeff Disher, Will Anderson alongside, and we are ready for period number three as the team skate back out onto the ice with Tartan in front three to one in a, t in a tail of two periods if I can go with the Shakespeare route, which I just did. Matamida has got to come out here. They've got to come out firing, try to put some pressure early on Tartan. They're, they're going to have some trouble. Uh, Tart Tartan's playing really well in the defensive zone, and I think they're frustrating Matamida a little bit. Didn't we note in the opening period that it took Matamida 16 minutes and 55 seconds to create the first scoring opportunity? They're going to have to do something a lot quicker if they want to <laughs> have a shot at getting back in this game. And if you're Tartan, you just do the opposite. Continue to stick to your game plan. Both teams know their team identity. I think both coaches have done a nice job of, of uh, coaching a game plan, and I think they're both trying to play it. Right now, Tartan's just executing a little bit better. On the Tartan side of things, uh, Tartan is right on point in terms of how many goals they give up, 3.45 on the year. You see Ethan Peterson on your screen. By the way, Matamida scores for a game. They give up only two. So lopsided numbers in terms of averages, in terms of goals per game given up and goals scored per game. Is that why they say statistics don't lie? St How about this? Statistics don't matter, just like polls in the college game in a sense. Now now in the college game, right now in terms of where we are in the year, the pairwise matters. Yep. Ready for the third period of play. Our first of two on the month where we feature Tartan. And we'll see them again January 30 in this building against the, or against South St. Paul. Looks like the refs are delaying things here just a bit. My guess is they're thinking the ice is a little bit soupy in a couple spots, or they're gonna let it try to dry off here a little bit. I agree. Let's talk Dylan Kisner while we have a second. Uh, eight points on the year, as you see him on your screen there. 11 games played. Talk about his night. Well, I like the performance of, of uh, Bertelsen both Bertelsen brothers and Kisner. He, they're doing a nice job of putting pressure on uh, 
Matamidai's uh, goalie. They're getting a lot of a lot of traffic in front, trying to take the goalie's eyes away, uh, create some screens and some second chance opportunities. And then while we have a second, as we see the Matamidai bench with Jeff Poschel, uh what does Matamidai need to do to get back into it right away? Well, they're clearly trying to stretch the zone. We'll see if they're going to stick with that game plan. Sometimes I think uh, two or three short, quick passes are better than one big, long one. At least you're coming out as a unified front. So we'll see what they come together with. We have already played that funky music, White Boy, and Tartan made the first play of the period. Quickly retrieved by Luke Young, who has two goals on the night for his fifth of the year. Quick turnover and a shot from Ethan Peterson that went by the wayside. Peterson with one or more assists in every game but three so far this year. Tartan will work it out to center as the Titans try to maintain control. They lead 3-1 in the early going of the final Kento from here at Tartan. Shot the length of the ice by Matamidai, leads to no icing, so we'll play on. And now up ice come the Titans. Line change back behind the play, doesn't matter though, Ben Dardis made the stop. My guess is we're gonna see Tartan getting the puck deep quite a bit. Doesn't matter if you win by two, you win by three, you win by four, a win's a win. So my guess is they'll uh, cross that red line and we'll see them throwing it in deep and trying to forecheck would be a decent win for Tartan who would move to three and one on the year if they can hold on. And that's in the Metro East Conference. As it comes back to Berglund, head shot went wide and the rebound did too. Tony Newbeck threw it in. He has a brush with the buzzer already this uh, or tonight, as a quick shot there. Parent save, and a nifty one by Jack Cashin. Whistle for the net coming off its mooring. Well, whatever Poshel said to Matamita, I seem to have worked. They're, uh, they're coming out firing right now. That is a very nice rush, all three guys together. Nice passing, nice quick passing, and a couple good opportunities there. You should do this analysis thing more often. 15-34, left to go in the third. Jeff Disher, you're also hearing the vocals of Will Anderson, who was with us. As Matamidi wins that draw, kept in at the line by Newbeck. And it is Matt, er, Tartan three, Tony Newbeck one. Brought out of the corner by Tartan, the center. And retrieving is J.D. Metz. Metz worked it over to Ethan Peterson, who is upended as it went to Metz. And now Matamidi getting a little lackadaisical in their defensive zone. Giving me time to recover from the tongue twister as Jack Cashin makes the save. Cashin, one assist in a seven to two victory against Crookston back on December 7th. 306 total minutes of playing time, 155 total saves. Good numbers. That's what a 3.50 gets you. Matamidi with possession back behind the cage. This is Billy Buttermore. Seven points in his career for this year. Brought ahead though by Tartan. Luke Young with it back to the point. Osell could not. It's a great breakout by Luke Young. Very nice pass. And Osell, a three year starter for Tartan, but he could not uh, do the business there. Brought back out to center, Osell won't have an opportunity to pick up the trash because it's icing. I want to go back to that breakout, Young on the wing. This it's very, very underrated how critical it is to put a puck on a guy's forehand. Tartan just came out of their zone just very fluidly and, and very quickly because of the good quality passing. Face off coming in the defensive zone of Matamidai's as we are under a football quarter remaining in duration. And Matamidi with possession. That's Tony Newbeck on the far side as it's dropped off to Duxon. Dylan Duxon was upended, and that puck left the bench or left, and it went into the Tartan bench. You see the conference standings there that we referenced a little earlier on. Matamidi third in the conference at four and one, Tartan at two and one. But look at Matamidi's overall record: ten and three. I like that a lot. 
Tartan with possession back behind. And a whiff on a long pass from Fairbanks as it comes to Schwantes. Schwantes twists and shouts his way to the ice. Kept alive though by Tartan. And it comes over to JD Metz eventually getting to Berglund for Matamidi. Berglund enters the zone on side. Left circle. I was much like the goaltender there. I lost sight of the puck, but it'll come to Schwantes as Tartan looks to settle it down. Young looking for a trick. However, it'll go to Schwantes, and Schwantes rubbed off the puck. It'll go instead to Swinghammer. Swinghammer's pass could not connect, but he regathers into the neutral zone. Swinghammer got it over to Cashin. Cashin dances, oh. and he finds Strecker. That's Easton Strecker with the puck. Forehand try blocked. Great vision on that pass by Cashin. Peterson retrieves, and it'll go to Adam Johnson with a shot off a pad. Second try will not go. And here come the Titans. Dumped in by Tartan, and Matamidi has no choice but to bring it back up. Here comes Dulac. Dulac with a shot, and it is saved. Marshallon made a great play up at the blue line, the offensive blue line. I personally thought he should have been getting the puck a little bit deeper, and he saw something that I didn't see and made a great pass across to his line mate. That's why we're up here. We can see these things usually. 12 and a half minutes to play. Matamidi with possession. After the, the draw was won, what have we here? Buck went out of play. Aha. So we'll have a face off in the same spot. Puck is down, face off one by Tartan. Olsen back behind the cage. And Tartan cannot connect on a relatively simple exit pass. What, remain, or what remains to be seen is if they get burned on that. Brought ahead though by the, tar by the Titans, Easton Strecker centered one. And Osell, I believe, shouldered off the puck as it comes to Buttermore. Left circle, and the Zephyrs hit iron. The iron unkind for Matamidi as they keep it alive in the offensive zone. Brought ahead though by Olsen. Now coming on is Olsen, alone as a line change happens behind him. Dropped off, he had the right idea. Here come the Zephyrs in return. Berglund with a shot, save made, but it'll go far side. And now Matamidi retrieves it from the scrum and they enter the offensive zone. That was Klingbeal, who almost got checked into the, into the bench. Another great pass there, Fairbanks. I don't know if Kisner had complete control of that. Quick shot was wide of the cage, though, as it came to J.D. Metz. Metz got it over to Ryan Berglund. Berglund enters. Berglund right circle. Berglund. There was a, few, a Ferris Bueller reference in there somewhere as it comes up ice for an icing call. 10.44 to play in the period. I have no words. Some good pressure by Matamida in the offensive zone. They are uh, gonna have to sustain a little bit more if they're gonna, if they're gonna get something past them. You see four and one are Tartan when they lead after two. Quick shot, gloved by Jack Cashin. He has not given up many rebounds. The last time the puck, or the most recent time the puck hit the pipe on this end, I have a good friend in uh, Bayou country who would be uh, very happy with the phrase that I used with the iron being unkind. We'll leave uh, who that is alone for right now. Puck down. And Tartan with possession. 10 and a half minutes to go in the game. Matamidi needs to hurry. 
Brought ahead though by Tartan and they were onside. No, they're not. And the two nines getting into it back behind the play, but it led to an offside with 10-24 remaining in proceedings. I think they're giving Tartan a penalty. And I would agree with you. Mike Shet Bertels into the box at six minutes, 36 seconds. Ruffing. They're gonna go coincidentals. Okay. And Nikolai Dulak it will, was, will sit down. It was behind the play. I think that's the right call. I would go, yeah, I, I agree with you. I would go coincidental roughing, if anything, and we'll see if we can get the call. It is roughing. So it's, it's coincidental ru roughing minors, which means we are four on four for a deuce. Osell back with it. And so this one found by Schwantez. Schwantez's father or, will wait on that point actually. As it is found by Schwantez for a moment. And now brought in by Hansen. Shot off the side of the cage. 9.45 to go in the third as this one is brought ahead. Schwantez stops, pops, waits, lost the puck. Back to center, it'll go to Fairbanks. Now Schwantez waiting near side, and a quick shot from the blue line, fisted away by Dardis. 9.20 left to play in the third period, as this one bounces back out to center. I have a point on Schwantez's father that I want to make. And Landon's father, Justin, held scoring records at Tartan until the 2014 season. I played against him, very, very good player. He played here from 1988 to 1992 as that icing call will halt play. Not to mention age or anything like that, but we won't mention how old I was back in those days. Matamidi when trailing after two. Ofer in three tries, so they've lost three games. Puck is down, face off one by Tartan. And that's swing hammer around the corner. Tartan needs to clear the puck away. 8.50 left to go in proceedings as this one will bounce on to Strecker. And that's Easton Strecker who threw it over to Jonah Roberts. Roberts run in two as this one will come back over to Grokey. Grokey dropped it. And now it'll come back over to Swing Hammer. Swing Hammer lost it. But Matt I might not be able to turn that into anything special. Max Cash in there to pick up the trash. Into the corner. And I may have been wrong if that play had materialized. Berglund centered one. And now Tartan content to clear with a two goal lead. Brought ahead by Matt that's Grolke. Lost the puck and Cashin got run in two. Now into the corner. Matamidi still with possession, eight minutes to play. Centering feed into the bread basket of Jack Cashin. Ethan Peterson worked really hard to get himself a good shot there, or a shot on net, I should say. But I would like to have seen him move that puck out to Lalek on the point. Let Lalek step to the middle and get some more traffic in front. It's gonna be very, very hard to beat a goalie from that angle. I mean, he did get the puck on net and they say that's never a bad play, but no. Traffic in front is going to be a little bit more beneficial. We saw a replay of Jack Cashin's save there on, er, at the end of that sequence. As Metamidi with control, was that played with a high stick? It was not. Delayed offsides. Brandon Olsen with possession for Tartan. And now here come the Titans. Brock Bertelson, who has played 61 career games for the Titans, and he's been a captain the last two years. Into the corner, the puck will spit out. This is Lollick. Lollick threw it on to Ryan Berglund. Berglund got around one. No check, that, that's Olsen. Olsen would have gotten around one as that puck bounces in. Um, crazy pinball flipper action here at Tartan Arena. Here come the Titans. Where, no, 
the shot opportunity would materialize. Oh, this is door. Fairbanks. Hello. No, it wouldn't go for the Titans. Very, very good look by Fairbanks. And there's a smart play by uh, 41 there to make sure he didn't play that puck. Because he made a line change, and his line mate has, was not to the bench yet. So good heads up play there by Putzier. And now Tartan re-enters with a shot that's into the bread basket, definitely of Ben Dardis. Before Dardis caught that puck on this side, uh, it was Jack Cashin who was trying to claim icing on Matamidi, but I think he was out of his net when he was trying to make that claim. 6.47, left to play in the third. We've enjoyed it, we hope you have too. Puck is down, and a quick shot by Tartan went by the wayside. And now, back out to neutral, the Titans will regather. This is Bertelson. Bertelson has it kicked on, it went to Shet from Brock. And now Brock will send that in. We were in Tampa Bay and that puck hit the ceiling. That may be a foul ball. Brought on by Matamidi is a quick stretch pass. Almost worked for Dulac. Dulac has been held off the board tonight. Brought on by Tartan. Six minutes to play. Two on two at the line. That's Osell slammed. Last I checked, those boards don't have any give. And Johnson will try and clear, they did. Tartan is very deliberately only sending one man in down below the goal line, so they're keeping two men up high here. They, they're not gonna get caught on an odd man rush, or at least that's the intention. And they don't need to do anything stupid with a two goal lead. Further supporting your point. Exactly. Be very, very, uh, very silly to forecheck and get caught on an odd man rush. Yes. Matamidi, back up ice they go to neutral, but no further. Two on one at the line for Tartan as that puck short side swept away by Dardis to the corner. Smart play on his part. Now the physical play ramps up as this one will go the length of the ice, but it will not, or it will go for icing. And to Mr. Cash and I say, hey, try again. You'll get the icing call this time. I believe the uh, proverb would be, if at first you don't succeed. Five minutes to play in the third period. Matamidi with possession. Brought ahead by the Zephyrs and Berglund with a shot. Off bodies in front. And it would not go. Quick shot by Newbeck would not go either. Here comes Tartan. Back up through the neutral zone, it'll go to on. His shot missed everything. Now it'll come back to the blue line, kept alive by Fairbanks as he goes off on a change. There's 250 bucks for his parents. <laughs> oh, what big hit. hit here on Ryan Berglund. And Berglund a little slow to get up and get off. I think he got his bell uh, rung. And it was a legal hit shoulder or uh, below the shoulder. Four minutes to go. And again, Tartan just pounding it deep. Don't do, don't do anything stupid with two goals or with a two goal lead is what that says. Quickly dropped by Newbeck. Newbeck with a hit delivered on him. No icing. We will play on. Puck in a scrum right now as we tick down to the three and a half minute mark. Postal may pull the goalie here. We'll see uh, See when he calls him over. I'm thinking he's starting to think about that, but not right now as Tartan has the puck. Line change coming for the Titans. Puck kicks out into the corner, another big hit as the puck is not out of the zone. Easton Strecker with a centering feed that would not work. You see Dardis trying to inch out. So the thought is there. 
Olsen sends that one near side, kept alive by Johnson. And now here come the Titans. Brought ahead by Tartan and Strecker. That's Bo Strecker who tried to drop it off. Got it to Olsen. And now Matamidi with an odd man rush. Two on one at the line. This is Johnson. His shot stopped. Great save. Best save of the night as the net goes off. Look at that smile on Cash, and he's a happy man right now. <laughs> Here's a replay of the save. Right circle, centering feed. My goodness. Again, though, look at the back check by 13 from Tartan. Olsen, really nice job making sure there wasn't a second chance opportunity there. And great, great aggressive mindset from Cash and two getting over to make that stop. 229, clock not back underway yet. We are playing. No, now they get it under now they get it to start. Around the corner, kept in by Matamidi. That's Newbeck who kept it in at the point. Now Tartan trying to clear. They do back out to center. Here come the Titans. That's Bertelson. Shoved. And now or Ethan Peterson will come out, pass to Johnson. Johnson, drive, and it got blocked away. Under two minutes to play. Goaltender still on the ice for Matamidi. Back into a scrum. I would send him here if I was on the bench, but I uh, missed the opportunity, so to speak. Zef or the Zephyrs with the puck. This is new back far side. 135 left to play in the third. Goaltender off for Matamidi. Extra man on. And now Matamidi comes out of that scrum. Six on five, we play. Puck to the net, and now Tartan will clear. Up ice come the Zephyrs. They need to hurry. This is Johnson who worked at cross ice. And now the puck kicked on to J.D. Metz. Metz threw one towards us. Matamida has got to get that puck deep there. The clock's still running now, too. Now we'll see, we'll see if they reset it. I thought Poshel waited a little long to get their goalie out there. They had some, some good sustained pressure. I thought they could have pulled the goalie and tried to take advantage of it there. They're gonna reset it to a minute two. Right call. And a timeout taken by Matamidi, you'd assume. No announcement made. You see a graphic of the last 10 times these two have played. Matamidi with a two game winning streak. Tartan last one on January 19th of 17 by a six nothing score. That ended a three game win streak for Tartan and man, that was a mouthful. Matamidi had won the five previous meetings up to January 9 of 16. So three years to the, or four years to the day since Tartan's uh, it was a three, believe it was a three nothing victory or so in 16. So the last minute, if you're a Tartan Titan, all you're trying to do here is fire the puck off the glass. You don't yep. really care where you put it, high off the glass somewhere. Definitely you're not gonna go up the middle with it or you shouldn't be going up the middle with Ooh. it. Fire it off the glass and uh, try to get it out of the zone. Matamidi is gonna have to outnumber the puck. They're gonna need at least two men on the puck at all times and probably in most cases three. They have to win the puck battle because of all Tartan needs is essentially two or three clears here to wrap this game up. But what must you do if you're Matamidi to start that? You must win faceoffs, and there's an important one coming. Win the faceoff, get the puck deep, and forecheck. Tartan plays a really good tight defensive zone, so I don't think they're gonna stick handle around too many guys. Uh, they're not gonna win it by being fancy. They're gonna have to get in there and be gritty. We will have a draw at center ice. Goaltender back on for Matamidi. Briefly, as he's out to the hash marks. Puck is down, face off one by Tartan. 
and a quick shot by Schwinghammer goes by the wayside and is saved by Bandardis. 50 seconds left to play as a, tar or a Tartan Titan goes down and now the goaltender is off for Matamidi. Quick shot there by Johnson would go by the wayside as a backhand try by Peterson did just that as well. Puck still loose with 35 to play. And the puck back behind, Matamidi not doing themselves any favors. Brought back ahead for a tip from Adam Johnson that wouldn't work. Look at Marshall on in front, making sure he's got a guy picked up. Dulac, near or far post, wouldn't go. Now back behind, it'll come to Newbeck. Newbeck scored the first one. It got tipped though, as a shot from the high slot goes wide of the, of the cage. Five seconds to play. And it looks like Tartan will win their seventh game of the year. I tell you what, those Tartan kids, they earned it. They played very, very well in the defensive zone. They are very well coached. The type of, of D zone coverage that they play and knowing how to grab a guy is not something you see too frequently in high school hockey. And I'll give you another thing you don't see too frequently in high school. A mob scene after a win like that over one of the best teams in Class A. Let's wrap it up with your final thoughts. My final thoughts is both uh, both teams know their game plan. I think they're well coached. I think uh, Tartan was able to execute a little bit more effectively tonight, and obviously you saw the result on the scoreboard. And you see our upcoming broadcast here on SCC on January 17. White Bear Lake takes on Creighton Durham Hall in boys basketball. We are back January 30 in this building as South St. Paul comes, come, comes calling. You ready to do TV again? Absolutely. All right. That will do it from here. The Tartan Titans upset the Matamidi Zephyrs by a count of 3-1. For Will Anderson, Jeff Disher, and for everybody who's been a part of this one. So long, everybody. Thanks, Jeff.